All right, good morning. Welcome to the King Center. So great to see all your bright and smiling faces out there this morning. You're so wide awake to be so early in the morning. So I'm going to try to meet that excitement. So um, on behalf of Dr. Bernice A. King, who is the CEO of the King Center, and Dr. Kalisha Graves, who is my boss, she's the um, chief officer for programs um, department, I'd just like to welcome you all here. Um, and so we want to have a great time today. Teachers, administrative, you know where the bathrooms are. If you have to go during the program, just quietly depart and come back. Um, but do students do not go anywhere without the permission from your teacher, okay? You're not allowed to do anything without their permission. Even if I said to do something, you still need whose permission? That teaches very well. So once again, we're going to have a great time today. We have a lot in store for you. And right now, I would like to, for to share a welcome to you all at this time. Hey, greetings, everybody. I'm Bernie Say King. I'm the CEO of the King Center, and I'm the youngest child of Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. And I just want to take this time to welcome you to the King Center. We're glad you're here. And we want to make sure that you have a very powerful, exciting, fun, energizing, and engaging experience. And so we've got some dynamic people here today that's going to talk to you. And you're going to learn more about Dr. King beyond what you've seen in a textbook. And we're just excited because you're the generation that's going to change the state of our world. And we're depending on you. And we want to make important deposits in your life today. And so I want to welcome all of the students. I want to welcome all of the educators to the King Center. All right. Do anybody know who we just saw on the, um, the video? Anybody know who it is? I think I saw the young man hand right here in the white shirt next to the teacher. Want to stand up and tell us who, would, who did you just see? You got to speak up now. The boss? Yeah, it's the boss, but do you know who the, what the boss name was? What was the name? Doctor? Yes, it's Dr. Bernice A. King, and she's the CAO. And you're going to be given a prize because you paid attention. So will you give him a, a prize, please? Thank you. Thank you. Job well done. Thank you. Now, what you have there, you received a book. Short, raise it up so they can see. Teachers, I'd like to remind you, I don't know how if you're familiar with the, the Student with King Reading Corner. The Reading Corner is a program that comes directly into your classroom. You can sign up for If you miss the program, there's a number of them on our website. You can go out and register and just see them now, but you can register next year because we're at the end. We have one more Reading Corner in May, so check out the um, King Center. You have information on that. That's the Student with King Reading Corner. We do a reading every month, and you get the opportunity to hear from an author and ask questions of that author. So congratulations, you got one of our authors, and she'll be coming back in May. So hopefully you can um, sign up for that if you haven't signed up before. Also, for high school students, we have a, a similar program to what you, hear, you come here today, what we call our Civil Rights Interactive Talk, and that's done online. And we have one of those scheduled coming up. So... If you're not familiar with what we do at the King Center, our various programs, I want you to go out to the website and check them out, www.thekingcenter.org. Go to the Student with King portion of the website and look for our teacher's resource. We got a lot of stuff on there that can help you all to continue to um, teach your students about social justice, okay, at their level. So look forward to you all doing that. Once again, let's get a young man a round of applause for a job well done. Now, we heard from the CEO. Now, the CEO um, is one of the members of the King family, but not the only member of the King family. The CEO um, has siblings. Now, sibling, who knows what a sibling is? Right here, the young lady with the first hand that went up. Stand up and tell us what a sibling is.
Very good. That's right. Let's reward her for a job well done. You have uh, siblings, a lot of kids, a lot of them. How many of you all have siblings? Anybody got siblings? Yeah, we all have siblings. That's very important to have siblings. And Dr. King also has some siblings. Would you like to know something about the sibling? Yes, I would too. Let's see if we can find out something about her siblings. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mrs. Coretta Scott King had four children. First came Yolanda Denise King. Her nickname was Yoki. So cool. When she was a little girl, she wanted to be an actress. She loved acting and pursued a career in acting. Yoki worked very hard on being the best actress she could be. Yoki had starring roles in TV shows and movies. Then came Martin Luther King III. His nickname is Marty, and he loved sports and music when he was a young boy. Martin grew up to be a politician and motivational speaker. Martin has spoken to thousands of people all over the world. After Martin is Dexter Scott King. Dexter was named after Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, where Dr. King was the pastor. Dexter loved playing with his brother and sisters when he was a young boy. Dexter grew up to be a businessman and chairman of the board of the King Center. And last but not least is Bernice Albertine King. Her nickname was Bunny, and she loved skating and playing with her brothers and sister. She also loved playing sports. Bernice is a minister, lawyer, and the CEO of the King Center. All right, job well done to the young lady. You right? They have siblings or other family members, so job well done. Okay, at this time, he's not my sibling by birth, but he is a sibling to me by fraternity connection. He's in a, uh, a different fraternity from me, but we all are brothers in the Greek life. And I have a great pleasure introducing this next individual that's going to come and talk to our middle school and high school students and share a little bit about his programs. And this individual is Mr. Ian Moore, and he is the director of our beloved Community Academy. And I hope you'll learn a little bit more about that. Let's pay a loud round of applause for Mr. Ian. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, good. I heard we have uh, Oglethorpe County Academy in the building. Is Oglethorpe County Academy in the building? Are y'all here? Oh, oh, I don't even know if they're here though. I don't. I heard that uh, maybe Scott Elementary is in the building. Is Scott Elementary in the building today? Hold on, hold on. We got to do this again. We're gonna do it twice. I got to do it again for Oglethorpe too. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Elementary. Again, I thought that Scott Elementary was in the building today. Is Scott Elementary in the building today? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I also thought that Oglethorpe County Academy was in the building today. Is Oglethorpe County Academy in the building today? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I appreciate you all being in the building, uh, coming into the King Center. Raise your hand if this is your first time at the King Center. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. I'm happy that you're here. We're so ecstatic that you're going to learn something. You're going to walk away with something that you, you didn't have before. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to walk and tour the grounds and, and maybe go into the birth home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm really excited too for my students in Scott Elementary who raised their hand because you all, you know, live in Atlanta. You're in the city of Atlanta. And I think it's very important that everybody in the city of Atlanta, but all around the world, but especially here in the city of Atlanta, can come to the King Center and learn more about Right, one of the icons of the city, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., icon of Georgia for Oglethorpe County Academy. Uh, my name is Ian Elmo Moore. I run the beloved Community Leadership Academy. So, Oglethorpe, I'm talking to you all because your pro my program specifically deals with middle high school students. Scott Elementary, one day you will be, I, I believe, in John Evictus, and then we'll talk, or you'll be at Best Academy, or you'll be at Coretta Scott King Academy, right? With, so you definitely have to talk. We'll talk about the beloved Community Leadership Academy. But high school and middle school, it's completely virtual. 
Um, I have students from all over the world. I'm talking about Bangladesh. I'm talking about India. I'm talking about Scotland. Uh, I, I'm talking about some countries in South America. But I also want you. I want somebody from Oglethorpe Ac County Academy to be in the next cohort of the Leadership Academy. We're going to teach you about NV365, which is the philosophy and methodology of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you're into coding or gamification, you want to design video games, we're going to teach you that. And then also, if you're interested in business or entrepreneurship, starting your own business, it's going to help you with that. So if you're interested in NV365, creating your own video game, mobile application, website, or interested in designing a business proposal, like writing a business plan, the beloved Community Leadership Academy is the program for you. You can learn more about it by going to our website and hitting programs. When you hit that programs tab, you're going to see beloved Community Leadership Academy. Uh, just send us an email, and we'll make sure we keep you in the loop when the next round of applications opens up. All right, so who's, who's ready for the panel discussion that we're about to have? Well, give me some noise. Who's ready for the panel discussion we're about to have? Cool, cool. Be before we get to it, I, I just want to test my, my middle school, high school students, my students at Oglethorpe County Academy. We gave out some prizes at elementary, but but not to you all. So my job is to ask questions to see if we know the answers, uh, to see if we can give out some prizes. Is that okay? That's okay? All right, cool, cool. All right, so here goes my question. My question is, and I'm coming with this in a fly, right? Um, who's the founder of the King Center? I told Scott Elementary this earlier. You might have overheard, but just think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. Maybe five, four, three. Go ahead, if you may, please. If yes, Coretta Scott King. Let's do a round of applause. Round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Let me think of another question. Oh, we just asked this question, so we're going to see who's paying attention. Um, Dr. King and Miss Coretta Scott King had how many children? Oh, your hand shot up first, man. Four. Absolutely correct. Good job. We give her a round of applause, too. All right. We're going to play a quick other game. Other game. Quick fair share. Yeah. And I'm going to bring up my good friend again, uh, Mr. Donald Bullock. Thank you. All right, let's show a round of applause for Mr. Ian. Our job well done. I mean, he does a great job with our youth. I, I encourage you all, when the next cohort come out, you need to sign up for it. They're doing great things. And right now, this is being streamed. i just like to shout out to our audience that we have. I know we have people on there from Africa and India that are watching us. And also, I think we have the principal from Scott Elementary School is also watching. I've, is it Mr. Long, Longley? Do y'all want to shout out to say hi to him? Hello, Mr. Youngley. All right. Your students are saying hi to you, sir. Now, we're going to have a little fun in here today. How many of you all did your homework? How many of you um, teacher read the book to you? Good. All right. How many of you read the article? Very good. Good job. Everybody did their homework. So we ready to go then. We good to go. So teachers, you should have selected a team. So I want the team from um, Oklahoma. No, I want the team from Scott to get ready. So let's have some music, boys. Okay. Elementary, we should have three students coming forward to participate. Are we okay, voice, with the, the music and the, the questions? Yes? Come on. All right, all right. Come on along here. All right. Some of you may be familiar with the concept of think, pair, share, but we're going to explain it for our students. We're going to give you a question, and then once we give you that question, you can get a chance to think about your answer. Once you get your answer, you're going to pair with your partner to discuss your answer, and then once you discuss your answer, you're going to choose someone to share your answer, and we as the audience, we're going to let you know if you're correct or not. Now, 
the question may be asked because all of you did your homework. You yourself may know the answer, but do not yell it out. In the classroom, we do what? Raise our hands. Very good. So um, can you give me a question? I can't hear you. It's not working. All right. Technology again, but I have one memorized in my, in my head. So I'll ask the question. The question for you all is, Dr. King grew up in this neighborhood here. He read about the neighborhood he, he, he grew up in. And the name of the neighborhood had a name. I'm going to give you two choices so it will be easy for you. It was called, was it called Sweet Auburn Avenue? That's the first one. Or was it called Sour Auburn Avenue? So think about it. Was it Sweet Auburn Avenue or Sour Auburn Avenue? Think about it. You got the answer. Share with your partner. Talk it over with your partner. Remember, you collaborate. It's always good to collaborate. Collaborate with one another. Talk with them. Y'all don't know how to collaborate? Talk to each other. You don't want to talk to her? Talk, talk, talk. Make sure you have the right answer. Tell her what your answer is. All right. While they thinking of it, I hear some of you saying it. Don't say it too loud. All right. All right. Okay, you got your answer. Who's going to be the person to share? All right, tell us what your answer is. Our answer was Sweet Avenue. Sweet Auburn Avenue. Are they correct? Yeah. Yay! Let's make some noise for them. Woo! That's absolutely correct. I do apologize. I, I would normally be up here dancing and singing to the music, but apparently our audio has gone on us again. But in any event, don't worry about that. Let's give them a round of applause. Jobs well done. Now, as you exit the stage, I want to get your name, but as you exit the stage, you're going to get a card. At the end of the day, you're going to get a gift, okay? Because we appreciate you doing your work and getting ready for this and participating. Once again, let's give them a round of applause. What's your name? Harbin. All right. Thank you, Harbin. Tajaday. Thank you, Tajane. Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. All right. You can move. Let's go ahead. Let's move a little bit. Let's get. He finally got it up. That's good. Just in time for our middle school. All right. All right. Who do we have? That is two students from the middle school, high school to come up. Who are your two students? Come on down. Keep the music going. All right. All right. Way to go. They're on their way up. Let's give them a round of applause. Come the other way. This way over here. Thank you. It's the safest way. All right. All right. All right. All right, I, I like that. I like that. What that shirt says. What is your life's blueprint? All right. Did y'all notice that? What is your life? What is your life's blueprint? All right. And what is it? That's a great, great option. Come on over, young man. How you doing? State your name and where you're from. Uh, Kaden Bell. Kaden Bell. Uh, Oglethorpe County. All right. Asian Cook from Oglethorpe County. Asian Cook from Oglethorpe. Donald Bullock from Richmond, Virginia. Okay, we all stated our names. <laughs> all right. All right, then. Boris, now that you're working, could you give us a question for middle school or high school? Oh, so I'm giving a question. So it worked or not working? All right. Do you all remember the article you, you read? Your teacher did give you the article that we had to read, right? And you know what it was about, right? Okay. Can you summarize? In one sentence, what was the significance of that article, that, that article, what it was talking about? <laughs> well, tell us what you, what you think we're talking about. Go ahead. What do you remember from the article? One thing you remember from it. We're talking about equality. That's it. That's it. Equality and love. Equality and love, very good. When it's basically talk about equality and love, you're absolutely correct. And the love is talking about is what we call agape love. 
Agape love is the love that you do in spite of anything, not because it's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. It's because it's a human being and you want the best and you want equality. And that's what Dr. King did in all what he was doing. He wanted people to be treated as human beings. He wanted people to be treated as respectful people and to treat them that way. And that's what you're talking about, the love, the love that he had and the love that he felt to everybody to show one another, be respected to one another. So once again, it's the agape love, what the article talks about. And that's what Dr. King does. All of his stuff is, is from that. As you all know, he was a minister and he preached the gospel. But that's one thing that, that we get from that article. She's absolutely correct. The love and having equality. So let's give them a round of applause for a job well done. Once again, we do apologize for the tech technical problems we have, but we will get that straightened out for next year. But until then, let's give a round of applause to both of them. I need you to exit that way. You'll receive a card, and at the end, we have something special for you. Now, boys and girls, every time you're in school, your teachers tell you to do something, but they always quiz you, don't they? Yep, I know, I know. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn the tables on them. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna call an elementary school teacher up here, and we're gonna call a middle school teacher up here. And I'm just gonna randomly select somebody. So from Scott Elementary, my best friend has his name, so I'm gonna call Mr. Bill. Who's Mr. Bill? Where is he? All right, that's who we calling up. All right, all right, come on down. Let's go. All right, all right. Y'all want to cheer for him? Let's see if he if he paid attention. <laughs> we are now putting you on the spot, not to, for you to be afraid, because if you don't know the answer, I guarantee the boys and girls will be able to help you out, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. You want to tell us your name and where, you, where you're from? My name is Steve Beasley. I, I go, I, I'm a teacher at Scott Elementary, but originally from California. I taught at Scott Elementary years ago, but I'm retired now. Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> we're enjoying it, but you're doing a great job there, Scott. I'm so proud of you. You represent me so well. You're so well behaved. So you like, I guess all that stuff I left behind paid off. All right. That's one thing. I'm going to take credit, even if I didn't do it, but y'all doing a great job. So, Mr. Beasley, when you came in, did they give you some documents to look at and to read and, and to be familiar with the programs we have at the King Center? I'm going to do my best. Like you said, we can answer our questions. <laughs> did, did you listen to me when I talked about the programs we have for the elementary school kids? Uh-huh. Yeah, all right then. Well, your question is simple. What is a program that's online that we have that's designed for students. Hold up your book. That's designed for students that um, you can help with social justice on the elementary level. We have a program that we have online. You know what it is? Program that we have online. It began with students with King. Deal with a book. Reading. Reading. Corner. Very good. Let's give a round of applause. Yes, we have our Student with King Reading Court teachers. Have any of you all participated in that program? No one? Hint, middle school teacher. Hint, 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 middle school teacher, high school teacher. Hint, 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 you need to look at your program. You're coming up next. Hint, 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 look at your program. All right. Thank you, y'all. We're done, sir. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> We just want to let you know that we have programs beside this program that we want you to be a part of, okay? All right. All right, middle school teacher, we never know. Let's see if they paid attention. All right, all right. You know, I'm gonna have the middle school teacher help me out. Okay, who do we want to bring up here? Who do y'all want? Yell out the teacher name y'all want to come up. Miss Jones, Miss Jones. Miss Campbell, I heard Jones, I heard Campbell. Okay, everybody for Campbell, let me hear you. Everybody for Jones. All right, Campbell, come on up. Let's go, Miss Campbell.
All right, all right, all right. Camera's coming up. She's taking off her coat. She's getting ready. She's getting her, her brains together. She's getting ready. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise. All right, all right, all right. She's running up the stairs now. She's coming. She's all ready. You can tell she's a teacher. All she's doing is slide. Doing the lecture slide. She's doing everything to make sure she's ready. All right, all right. And what is your life blue, blueprint? All right. What is your life blueprint? I'm still working on it, but um, hopefully we can make some life-changing um, series out of some of these young people. So my life's blueprint is to make productive members of this community. This beloved community. All right, all right, all right, all right. We have several online programs. We have this program here, which is called the Civil Rights Interactive Panel Assembly and Field Trip. Now, we have another program that's similar to this where you get to spotlight one person where your students get taught. We just had one the other day. I don't know if you got to participate in it. We had Dr. Graves on, and she was talking about this wonderful project we have what Mrs. Coretta Scott King with his Mrs. Coretta Scott King timeline. I urge you to go on our website and look at that and utilize it. It is awesome. But I also will be following up, sending this information out to you. But right now, can you think of the online program? Are you familiar with the online program that we have for um, middle school and high school students? Is it leadership? Uh... Yep, we do have that program. Beloved Leadership Academy, is that what it is? That's it. Is that it? You know, that is absolutely correct. Cause we do have that one as well as we have one called the Civil Rights Interactive Talk. But you're absolutely right. The one thing about a teacher, the question I asked her, she's absolutely correct. Either one of those are a correct answer. Let's give her a round of applause. She paid attention. Ian, you did a great job. Job well done. Let's give her a round of applause. Let's give everybody a round of applause for a job well done. Okay. Now, what we have now is we're going to share with you what the prizes are that these individuals are going to receive for participating. And then after that, we're going to move on to the next part. At this time, we're having Kobe Bryant's sister to come out. Come on out, Kobe Bryant's sister. Let's give her a round of applause. Well, she's not, she's beautiful enough to be her. All right, <laughs> go to the next chair. All right. Okay. So for our so for our awesome student elementary contestant who's going to change the world one day, actually contestants, they're going to receive a King Center, The Skin You Live In book. They're also going to receive, because they're always doing homework and never playing on PlayStation and Xbox, they're going to, do, they're going to receive a King Center themed Pencil. And last but not least, they've got to have their swag going on with their King Center themed wristband. And for that dynamic elementary school teacher who was put on the spot, who is building the minds and hearts of young people every day, they're going to receive a King Center themed coffee mug to fill with coffee so they can put A's and B's on all their students' papers at night. They're also going to receive a King Center book, Lindsay Benzi. They're also going to receive a King Center Reading Corner book, teacher set. There's five books to this set from the Reading Corner series. They're also going to receive Yellow Dog Blues, the book. <laughs> They're racking up. Those teachers are racking up.
And they're also going to receive nurturing Nasir. And last but not least, they're going to receive the great book. And there's one more gift. They're going to receive a new car. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's the wrong show. Thank you for all of our awesome teacher and student contestants. We know that these students are going to change the world one day for the better. And for the student prize for our middle school, they're going to receive a King Center t-shirt. I'm sorry, high school students. My apologies. They're also going to receive a King Center themed ink pen because we know they're always doing homework. And they're going to receive a King Center themed book marker because they're in those books getting it done. And they're going to receive a King Center Dr. King pen to put on their jacket. And last but not least, they're going to receive a King Center wristband. Make sure you uh, match up that wristband with some sneakers that match the same color. And for that teacher that was on the spot, they're going to receive a King Center coffee mug to stay awake late at night putting, putting A's and B's on those students' papers. They're also going to receive a King Center T-shirt to get their swag on. Yes. Okay, is that it? Ah, there's something else hiding in the bottom of the bag. A King Center ink pen. And a tasty treat. Thanks so much. Have fun. All right. Thank you. Let's hear it for the voice. Norman, that's where the voice sound. The voice sound. Let's hear it for the voice. Let's hear it for Miss Brian. Let's hear it for the teacher with all those prizes. Let's hear it for our students and volunteer for all your prizes, and we hope you enjoy it. Remember to go out there and sign up for our program. Now, we're ready to move from this part. We've got a little fun. We went over our assignment that was preparing us for what's coming up next, but now we're going to be ready to move on to our panel, where you'll get the opportunity to hear from people who knew or worked with Dr. King or Mrs. King or worked in the civil rights movement. You'll be able to ask them all kinds of questions, whatever you want to know, anything that you can't find out on the internet. So do not ask me what, when, do not ask them when was Mr. Bullock born, because that's not on the internet, but they won't be able to find it. So you want to ask them thought-provoking questions, okay? But listen to when they get their introduction so you can know what they know, but they had the opportunity to, to be around Mrs. Coretta Scott King. Some of them had the opportunity to be with Dr. King, a new of Dr. King. So listen to them so you can ask questions and they can answer them for you. But right now I'm going to turn this part of the program over to a wonderful young lady who I've got the opportunity to work with over the years. And whenever I call her, she comes with me. She rearranged her schedule today so she could be here with you all. She is a retired broadcaster and she is the director of the Interface Community Initiatives. So she's doing a lot of great things out there in the community to make a difference, to help us with this beloved community. Let's give a round of applause for Ms. Angela Rice. All right, you can do better. Let's make some noise for Ms. Angela Rice. Good morning. Oh, wait, I can hear better than that. Come on, good morning. Woo! Y'all sound really good. Y'all sound like a soundtrack out here. Well, it is wonderful to be with you this morning. I'm learning about King. 
uh, Dr. King and Mrs. Coretta King, Scott King and the King Center. And I always learn too. I always learn too. But what happened to the gifts? They're all gone. Where's the gift lady? Come back. Come back. We need you. So let's get started this morning. I want to introduce you to some people who are going to talk to us about Dr. King, Mrs. King, the King Center, this whole concept of nonviolence. How many of you are nonviolent? Let me see. Did I see everybody raise their hand? Okay. Well, let's introduce our panelists. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Mr. Charles Alfin, who is a nonviolent 65 trainer. So if he will come out and join us, Mr. Charles Alfin, let's give a hand. And next, Mrs. Pat Lattimore. Ooh, she is fabulous. And so she's going to talk to us about being a babysitter for the King children and also a stylist for Mrs. Coretta Scott King. Let's give her a hand. Woo and then our last person is Celeste Bill, who is Dr. King's niece and also a nonviolent 365 trainer. So we're going to get to have uh, get to know a lot more about the King family and about these marvelous um, panelists that we have here today. We're going to start with Miss Celeste, who is going to further introduce herself and tell you about who she is and how she's related to the King and whatever else she wants to share about her wonderful life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, on behalf of the King Center and the King Center, um, the, the family legacy. I am Celeste Beale. I am the great niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My grandfather was A.D. King, Martin's baby brother. And um, my grandfather, like my um, great uncle Martin, were part of the civil rights movement. Both of them lost their lives um, to the struggle trying to make a difference for the world. I am a person who dedicates her life to making the world better. I am a firm believer in the dream of achieving a better society or the beloved community. I do a lot of nonprofit work. One of the things that I do is being a trainer for young people like yourselves at the King Center. I go out and I help teach people about being nonviolent and solving their problems with their words and working together to make the world better. And so I'm happy to be here and I look forward to having any questions from any of you a little bit later. And next we're gonna hear from our next two panelists, uh, Ms. Pat Lattimore. I, I, I had such a wonderful time talking with her this morning about her fabulous life with Mrs. Coretta Scott King and, and being a babysitter for the King children and all of the many things that she's had an opportunity to do. And then after here, we're going to hear from Mr. Charles Alpin, who will tell us some interesting things about going from one idea to another idea. So you're supposed to be listening, so you're going to have really great, great questions, right? And I'm going to see who's the best listener in the room. Okay. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I first started with the King family when I first got out of high school. Mrs. King was looking for a babysitter for her children. And I just found out the other day, I guess I'm getting old because I forgot. I thought I started when Bernice King was three years old. But Bernice told me I started when she was two years old. So I've been with, now Bernice just turned 60. Okay, so you see how long I've been with the family. Now I am in the King Center Library and Archives and I'm an archivist technician and what I do is I, I am archiving the belongings of Mrs. King. That means we used to stay on Sunset Avenue. My office was on Sunset Avenue. 
And so when we move Sunset Avenue after the death of Mrs. King, then uh, I came over to the King Center. So this year, make my fourth year working in the archives here at the King Center. So everything that Mrs. King had at Sunset during the era of Dr. King also, I am archiving their belongings so that they will be a part of history. Okay? Thank you. Good, good morning. Good morning. Oh, uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm Charles Alfin. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I've been in Atlanta since 1992. I'm a retired police captain. I served in the St. Louis Police Department for 26 and a half years. I was commander of homicide, narcotics, and child abuse. St. Louis is a very fast, a very violent city, the third highest murder rate in the nation. I met Mrs. King because I didn't believe in Dr. King because of the way I was being treated as an African-American in St. Louis, Missouri, where my father was treated. So I didn't believe in what Dr. King was doing because I didn't understand it. I had been on the police department for three years when Dr. King was assassinated. And some of the police officers refused to uh, participate in the ceremonies of Dr. King. And, and I got very upset, got very angry again. In 1981, I met Mrs. Coretta Scott King and C.T. Vivian, Reverend C.T. Vivian and Diane Nash, Dorothy Cotton, all the living, John Lewis, all the living legacies of the civil rights movement that moved with Dr. King. And I began to come down from St. Louis here to study every summer. They had a week long training. And I came down here and learned about uh, nonviolence, which I didn't know. I thought I knew what it was, but I didn't know. And then um, after years, I joined Mrs. King in teaching this. And when I retired, I just come back from the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union was looking at how to incorporate this philosophy in their country from communist to a uh, republic democracy. And Mrs. King asked me to come down here in 92 and join her to teach the philosophy, to, to teach the, the how do you use nonviolence. And I came down here in 92. I told Mrs. King I'd stay for one year because my house was in St. Louis. And I've been down here since 92, and I still stay down here. And, and I go back to St. Louis to visit only. So I'm happy with Atlanta. I've been all over the world. I studied in India. I understand Dr. King and Mahatma Gandhi philosophy. Uh, in 1993, Mrs. King sent us to South Africa because Mandela was getting ready to be elected and they wanted to teach people how do you respond to violence. So I spent four months in South Africa, all over South Africa, teaching philosophy of the King Center. I've been to um, Haiti, uh, Cuba, uh, India, I'm on Columbia, South America. This is all over the world. This is not just the United States. The King Center is all over the world. In fact, next month, May the 2nd, I'll be going back to Columbia, South America, because they're, they're having a whole city, Casado, where they say they want to design a whole city to be nonviolent. So that's a little bit about my action. I've been training police officers, educators, um, gang members, people who are, I don't like the word gang because uh, all of us have gangs, you know, police have gangs, teachers have gangs. So I don't like that word gang. There are people that are disrupting the community in a negative fashion. That's what I'll say. So I'm open to any question that you have. I'm going to break it down so you can understand it because we have two groups in here, adults and young people. And I'm going to try to break it down so your vocabulary that we use, you'll be able to understand it and be able to apply it when you get back to school. Okay? Thank you very much. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Is there anything that you heard already that you would like to ask a question about? Okay. Can you stand up and tell us what your question is? And what should... Oh, the mic is over there. Yes. Can you go to the mic? It's... Okay, it's right there in the hallway. Anyone else with a question? Follow her. And we can have all the questions. Yes, you see? Uh, where the young person is. Anyone else have a question? Follow, further, follow the young girl who's walking to the mic. If you have a question, follow. 
Who has a question? Okay, we got two questions. Okay, so if you have questions, go to the mic. Those of you who are joining us online from Alabama, um, the Gambia, Bhutan, which is in Asia, and Tanzania, and here in Georgia, um, um, put your questions in the chat and we'll get your answers um, to you as well. So we're looking great here in terms of our questions. So we're gonna get started. Has everyone who wants a question, okay, this young boy has been trying to get over there with his question for a minute. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Okay, so we have a question. So um, tell us your name, your school, and what your question is. Uh, Angel and Scott. Okay, Angel. Did, did Martin Luther King have a, a mom? Okay, there's a good question. Did Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., have a mom? Yes, Martin Luther King Jr. did have a mom. She was a wonderful, wonderful mother who loved her children um, very much. Martin was one of three children. He um, had an older sister, Christine um, King Ferris is her married name. And she's actually still alive today. She is the oldest member of the family. And um, like I said, my grandfather was a baby brother. He passed away. But they had two wonderful parents. They had Martin Sr. and his wife, Alberta. I actually um, got to meet Martin Sr., the dad, because he died in the 80s when I was a child. He was wonderful. His, um, Martin's mother was actually assassinated as well. She was playing the piano at Ebenezer Baptist Church and someone actually shot her in the 70s. Okay, our next question, your name and school and your question. My name is Lorenzo and my school is Scott. Why do you think they felt that the laws were fair anyway? Okay, can you repeat that again? Why do you think they felt that the laws were fair anyway? Okay. And I might have Mr. Um, Alpin answer that question. When you say they, when you say they, sir, sir, hello? When you say, <clears throat> when you say they, who are you talking about? Who are they? Um, the white. The, the white. Okay. Well, some whites, not all whites, but to be careful when we say we don't put everybody in the same uh, bucket. Some whites felt that the law was um, fair. Other whites felt that it was not fair. And a lot of whites fought to make sure the laws were fair. But I was thinking in my own study that there was about a power and fear. That's what creates this racism or separation, power and fear. And a lot of the people wanted power to be able to be, uh, say, I'm better than you. I can control you. And others had fear that felt like they were going to lose something because they had changed from slavery to reconstruction and their jobs were not there for the, some whites to work. So they felt like they were going to lose something if they would be fair to everybody, not just African-Americans. So it was about, in my opinion, about power and fear, the power to be in charge and over somebody and feel like they're better than somebody and then they would rationalize they would they would make excuses for their behavior of being fair they would say well the african americans are not too smart we have to look over them and, and make sure that we're their parents so they use that power and fear and that's what in my that was the driving forces behind whites some some whites thinking that they uh should use uh, unjust things to control people And it kind of builds off the last question. My name is Tajane, and I go to Scott Elementary School. And my question is, what was the worst law when you were little? Oh, what was the worst law when you were little? Um, let's have um, Miss Lattimore. The worst law when I was little. 
I don't know if it was a law, but it should have been against the law <laughs> that we had to drink out separate water fountains. Uh, we weren't invited uh, to eat in public places. We had to, like, it was a richest department store downtown in Atlanta where the blacks could not eat in the dining room upstairs. We had to eat in the basement of Rich's department store. So to me, that was unfair. But now you can eat anywhere you want to eat. You can go anywhere you want to go. In fact, you can do anything you want to do. It wasn't like that a long time ago. Our next question, your name, um, school, and your question. My name is Lauren, and I go to Scott Elementary. My question is, how did Martin Luther King save his family when the whites was being mean? Okay, who wants to take this? What, what I will say, um, growing up in the family, and this is something that we still learn today, is we learn that when people are mean to you, there are two ways you can react. One, you can be mean back to them, or two, you can actually respond in love. And so my family, the whole family, Martin Luther King Jr. learned from Martin Luther King Sr. who learned from, you know, the elders and his family because they were a family where there were a lot of ministers, right? Martin Luther King Sr. was a preacher. Um, Alberta's father was also a preacher. So they had a lot of um, traditions and histories that were rooted in love. And so they truly believed that love was the way to respond to people to affect change. Because think about it. If somebody is mean to you, right, if you return that same mean energy, you're not going to be able to get past it. And so, um, and that's what we teach at, you know, the King Center too, like nonviolent responses to injustice or to evil or to hate, because that is how, you know, you can respond to things to change it. Because if you can win a friend in the situation, y'all can work together to make um, the world better. So while we're talking about love, I want each of you to do something for me right quick. Look to the person next to you and tell them you love them. Okay, now look, look, let me tell you. There were some people who resisted doing that, who thought it was funny and who thought it was difficult, right? Because in your mind, when you think love, you think, oh, I love you, I love you. That, that's not the kind of love that I'm talking about, right? There are different types of love. Some people have a romantic love, you know, that might be the love that you see your parents have for each other. Or if, you know, for you young kids, you might see older people, you know, kind of have that love. But there's also a brotherly love, like a love you have for your siblings or your best friends. But the love that the King Center, Martin Luther King Jr., my whole family talked about was agape love. That's the love for humanity, the love that you give to people when you don't expect anything back. And by telling each other that you love them, do you know what you're saying? I see you. You're important to me. You matter. Okay. And so that's the kind of thing we want each of you to take away and share because people who feel like they are loved grow up and become important and make decisions in their lives that they know they matter. People who don't receive love and don't share love those are the type of people who go out and create violence in society. So I love each of you. Looking at your beautiful faces, seeing the smiles that are coming, it, it makes my heart full. And so that's what I want to share with each of you. And I want you to go out and share with the world. Oh, that was beautiful. Let's hear that word again. Agape. Agape. Okay, next question. My name is Elijah, and I go, I forgot which school I went to. Go to Scott, it's okay. I go to Scott Elementary. My question was, um, when Martin Luther King was alive, did you spend a lot of time with him? 
Okay. I did. Uh, it was a very short time because I started with the family in 1965, but Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. So I was able to see how he reacted as a father, how he came home every day, how he spent time with his children, and each one of them had a place on his face to kiss him when he come home. And I think Bernice was his forehead, and he would have to lift her up so that she can kiss him on his forehead. So they had a swing set in the backyard. He would go outside and push him in the swing. And did you know Dr. King was a pool player? He could play pool like a natural pro. It's a, it's a game that you play on a table where you have this long stick and you have to take the stick and hit the ball and it needs to go into one of the corner pockets. It's a really good game to play. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, my name is D and I go to um, Overthrow the Academy and I got a question for um, Charles and Mr. Charles and Ms. Lattimore. All right, so for Ms. Lattimore, what type of things do you archive? For um, Miss Scott, Miss King. Okay, what I'm archiving her. Okay, some of the things I'm doing, which uh, is important. When Mrs. King made speeches, I go out and speak to different places. She had to be. Uh, she didn't have to be, but she was dressed in certain outfits. You know, like you get up and put your clothes on every morning. Well, I put the picture with the clothes that she was wearing at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And anything else that's of history, uh, like pictures, uh, her handwriting, anytime she write a note, and she was good at sending out birthday cards for everybody's birthday. So if you got a birthday card from Mrs. King, you were blessed. So I keep uh, archives cards, letters, anything that her handwriting is on. Eventually, her handwriting, to get something with her handwriting, it's going to cost you a fortune. Just like Dr. King, I think one of his, his first, uh, what do you call them? First uh, book, the original book that you, if you would want to buy that book now, because if he had autographed it, it would cost you some money. So those are the type of things we, we uh, archive. Uh, just for your answer, my question. Wow. When I worked here for Mrs. Coretta Scott King for four years, that Ms. Lattimore, I have all kind of books signed by Ms. King. You mean they're worth some money? Oh, no. I would yeah. not sell any of my books autographed by Mrs. Coretta Scott King. I didn't know that. Thank you. Um, and for Mr. Charles, I got a question for you. How did you feel working on the homicide cases during the civil um, civil rights movement? Wow, that is a very excellent question. Because back then, um, if you were a police officer, you were classified as a sellout to your community. You were a sellout because you were African American, and and African Americans were like today, they were in, in conflict with the police. And also, when you joined the police department, you lost a lot of your friends because they didn't want to associate with you because you represented a sellout. That's an excellent question. The other thing is that you had a commitment to your community to help and serve and protect because when I was coming up, the police used to beat me violated me did a lot of things to me and i made a commitment that if i was ever in that power structure i would not violate people or abuse people so i had a real um struggle as to how would i behave as a police with power to kill the police are the only people that can kill the supreme courts give them the right to kill judges can't kill so therefore, I had to think through that and pray on it because I'm a Christian. I had to pray on it and think about what was my niche, what was 
that created a divine order telling me to do. And that divine order told me to go forth. And I was able to change offices, change communities. This philosophy that I learned from Mrs. King, I applied to the police department and began to mobilize communities to begin to decide their own destiny and not wait for the police to enforce it because communities have the power. And if you're waiting for the community, if you're waiting for the police to solve your problems, you're going to be waiting a long time. They cannot solve your problems. All they can do is lock up people. And you can't get out of this condition that we're in by just arresting people. You can't arrest your way out of this possibility. It's a good political statement. People get elected for it. But policemen cannot stop this. It takes the community. So what I've learned is through looking at Dr. King and how they mobilize on issues. I mobilize a community that's drug infested, that uh, homicide killing is a symptom of a much bigger cause when you have a homicide city. When you have drugs in your community, fights in your school, those are all symptoms. We teach people like you to mobilize to deal with the root cause of that, to begin to solve it. That's why we need you as leader. We look for leaderships. We look for leaders with a ship, not a canoe. We want people who can influence, and you can influence. You, you feel me? Okay, I want to talk to you when we get through. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy. Um, I'm from Scott Elementary, and my question is, what was Miss Bill's favorite thing to collect? My favorite thing to collect? Are you talking about... Um, you want my favorite thing? When I was your age, I used to collect um, stamps for a little while. I used to collect baseball cards for a little while. I was a huge baseball fan when I was a, a small child. And um, now one of my favorite things to collect are books, right? Because if you collect books, you can collect knowledge. And that reminds me, um, Ms. Lattimore was telling me that um, to share with you guys. Remember I talked a little bit about love? In the bookstore, we have a book called Be Love, which is for like elementary age children, which teaches you about agape love. And then for the older children, there's also um, Dr. King's book, A Strength to Love, that one, you know, you really have to challenge yourself and try to read it, but both of those are excellent um, books to look at. Thank you, and we have another question. So your name, please, and your question. And we have about 10 more minutes, so we're gonna try to make this as brief so we can get everyone in. Your name? My name is DeAndre, and I'm from Scott. And Mr. Charles, I got a question for Mr. Charles. Where did you meet the king? Put a plural on that, Kings. <clears throat> well, I met Dr. King's father, which uh, Celeste affectionately referred to as Daddy King. And then I met Mrs. Um, his naturalist wife. And then I met, um, um, I guess, through pictures, et cetera, by Dr. Bernie's, I mean, uh, Martin Luther King. And then I met Mrs. King and Dexter uh, in Montgomery. She met us in 1991. I was on a Freedom Ride tour and she came down and spoke to us in 81. And I was so impressed by hearing Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Dr. King's wife, that I came to the King Center to learn about nonviolence. She invited us to the Institute, a summer institute where we stayed for a week. So I met Mrs. King in 1981. Uh, I met all the children you know, um, Yolanda, uh, Dexter, Martin III, and Dr. Bernice King, the youngest girl, the four children, through working with Mrs. King, because they assisted Mrs. King. Yolanda King used to be the arts and culture. She would do, perform in arts and culture, Yolanda King. She's, uh, she's, she's passed on now. But I met all the Kings through first meeting Mrs. King, and then she introduced me to all the King family here in Atlanta, okay? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Morgan. My question is to Mrs. Pat. Do you think Martin Luther King would be happy to see the changes now? 
that's that's a good question. Uh, I don't think he would be too pleased about what's going on in the world today. In fact, I don't. I know he wouldn't be pleased, and what's going on, uh, because it's really taking us back 55 years. Some of the stuff that's happening, all of this violence that's going on, because he was a man of nonviolent. So he would not be a happy camper. Thank you. And your question? My name is Asia, and I'm from Oglethorpe County Academy. My question is, what steps are y'all taking on making a city, a whole city nonviolent? Like, what's your plan? Okay, I'm going to let you take that, Ms. Beal. Okay, it, it takes a lot of work. At the King Center, one of the things that we do, we offer um, courses. You can um, take the online academy to learn about nonviolence, but we teach and share the philosophy that Dr. King and his contemporaries use, you know, his associates, the other foot soldiers, ministers in the community, community leaders would go out and teach people how to have tough discussions. The philosophy um, of nonviolence, at, today we call it MV365, which is nonviolence 365 days a year. We say all day, every day. Everything that you do should be with nonviolence in mind. So we go out and we teach people principles such as number one, to be nonviolent, you have to be courageous. You know, number two, to be nonviolent, you have to um, you have to remember that um, you separate the things that people do, the evil that they do, from the person. So you stand against the evil, not the person that's doing evil. You try to find friendship and understanding. Right? If you see people as a potential friend, you can work with that person. Sometimes you have to remember that. Um, in order to succeed, you might have to suffer, right? You ha might have to put the hard work in. You might have to go through a little bit of trouble or struggles because the end result is what's a great thing. You have to remember that um, the universe is on the side of justice. So even if it doesn't look like what you want right now, you have to keep the hope that everything will end up on the side of justice and keep moving. And the other thing, you have to be rooted in love, right? You have to consciously, like in your mind, choose love instead of hate. If you can put those principles in your heart and work, then you can work with anybody to get to where you're going. So at the King Center, we have trainings for people as young as you, all the way up to adults and senior citizens companies who, um, you know, run banking systems and places around the world. Bernice is even um, in the process of getting a bank to change economic standings for people. So that, that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. And our last question. My name is Malik and this is from his pack and my, I go to Scott. What was Martin's favorite story from his grandma? I have no idea. <laughs> That's a good question. Or his mom. Or his mom. <laughs> uh, his mom. Well, for Martin Luther King III, that's the third child that's named Martin Luther King III. Now, what I observed while I was there was that he loved to get advice from his mother versus stories. Uh, when he wanted to talk to his mom or he had a problem, if she was on the telephone, he would go into her bedroom and he will sit very patiently until she finished talking. And if it takes all day, Miss King had a long conversation, you know, she'll talk forever. He will not move 
until she got off the phone and she gave him her undivided attention and she will help him solve his problem. So those are the way, those are the things that Martin III did besides her telling little stories. I can't think of any story that, I really can't think of any story that any of the kids that she would sit down and, and tell them, you know. Yeah, just a few questions to the, on, on what you're saying, but the college student, so important. How do you change the community? There's six stakeholders in your community. And Dr. King's taught us a strategy. Uh, Celeste gave you the wheel, what you have. But there's a strategy to mobilize and collaborate with these six stakeholders. And uh, just to make it clear is that Justin Jones in Tennessee was trained in nonviolence. The one in Tennessee, the three Tennesseans got expelled from the legislation. So there's the these six stakeholders. Dr. King said we have to institutionalize nonviolence. So institutionalize this, put it in the institution, not as a program, because programs don't work. So we have a strategic approach. We follow Dr. King's method of how do you change the community, but you have to use these six stakeholders because one of them can't do it. And I don't have time now to do that, but stay with the King Center and we'll tell you how to make your wishes move into a solution and not only re resolution, but reconciliation. There's a difference between resolution and reconciliation. Thank you. The last word is I want you to start with yourself. I want you to wake up if you look, if you wake up, look at me. I want you to, I'm giving you the final instructions. When I heard about this, I had to start with myself. I want you to look at how you treat your mother, your siblings, your friends. Are you listening? And your teachers and everybody around you, your community. And I want you to think other, think about what other people need, how you talk to other people, how you respond to other people when you are angry. Watch yourself, start with yourself. Once you do that, you'll begin to see how this works. It's very powerful. And also tell people that you're around, that you love them. That's okay, your mother, your teacher, your friends need to know that you love them. All love says is I care about you. And every human being needs that. So I, I caution you, I, I advise you for this little session, start thinking about how you talk and how you respect other people because you are our future. And I love you and I'm happy to be here. This is my favorite crowd audience to talk to. Thank you very much. Okay. Bernice King wrote a book, and it's in the King Center store. So if you all have time, go by and look at the book. It's called Be Love, and it starts with me. And in the back of the book, there is a pledge that you take in order for you to be a better person and a nonviolent person. So it starts with me. It's in Be Love. It starts with me. And it's in the King Center store. Oh, that's it. See that book? I think every kid should have this copy of this book because it will help you trying to stay nonviolent. Okay, check the King Center website. Uh, Dr. King was on um, talking to kids just like you, and she read the book. And so if you go back, when you get back home, look on your laptop or your desktop and find that segment of the program where Dr. King read the book. It's a good read. Yes, and, um, and you know, they even have swag. Like, it starts with me, right? Fill your spirit with positive words. 
whenever you say you are something, that's who you be who you become. So find good words to tell yourself. Say things like, I am compassionate. I um I have trust. You know what I mean? Like important words that build your character. And my advice, I'm looking at the back row. I'm loving what's your life's blueprint, right? A blueprint is a design. It's a plan for whatever it is that you're going to build. Start thinking about yourself as like a great monument that is going to make the world better and start writing down what it is that you want to be. Because whatever you say you are, whatever you write that you will become, that's who you will be. You guys are young. You can turn your life into whatever you want it to look like, but it starts with what you put into yourself right now today. So fill your life with great things. You can be a leader. You can, you know, just attack the world and make it a better place. So write it down and become who it is that you say you want to be. That's my advice to each of you. And I just want to say that there are two amazing words that we can all use and we can use it multiple times a day. And that's thank you. So I want to thank you for being such a wonderful um, group who shared with us today, you are, who are online and those who are here at the King Center. And I want you to say thank you to this wonderful panel who have come out to share their insight and their love with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's continue to hand clap. Let's thank Ms. Rice for a wonderful job she did in moderating this program and getting everything together. We appreciate her always giving of her time. She's here to help support the beloved community, which all of us can make a difference. And that's Ms. Uh, Pat said, it starts with me, it starts with you. And you can also find that book, make sure you get it before you leave in the bookstore. And you can also teach us, you know we need some time, you can put the reading corner on and you'll get a good quality 30 minute break that meet your school standards. So you can write it in your lesson plan. If you didn't sign up for Student with King in the past, make sure you go out there and sign up for our next one, which is on May the 9th. May the 9th is our next Student with King reading corner. Go to the website, contact me if you need help, but I want to see all of you in the corner. Once again, I want to thank you, but I need to give you some instructions. Panelists, I need you to remain for pictures. Uh, take about five more minutes of your time. I appreciate you. And then all those in students and teachers that received the card, I want you at this time, with your teacher permission, I want you to go towards the young lady there, and you will pick up your prize. It should only be about five people. Everybody should not be getting up. I want you to go now so that you won't get caught up in the traffic. Good. Move with a purpose. Okay, thank you. Finally, teachers, we're going to dismiss. We're going to dismiss the elementary school students and the rangers out there for your um, for your tour. All right, we're going to start with the elementary school first. But I need the teacher and those students that receive prize. I need you to come up here. We're going to take a picture with the um, the panelists. Teachers and all my prize winners, stay here. I need the middle and high school students to remain seated. At this time, teacher, will you lead the elementary school students out to the um, ranger? My assistant will assist you all. Look where she is. She'll take you out. Thank you. And let's give a round of applause to this volunteer. This volunteer here, I'm trying to get her name to make sure I say it right. Of course, I misplaced is Jasmine. She is from Houston, Texas. She wanted to volunteer and do something. She flew all the way from Houston, Texas to come here to volunteer. So let's thank you. And we're gonna get a picture with you also. So we have, and Ms. Bridget been volunteer. She's here each month. Thank you, Bridget, also. So right now, elementary school is departing. The Rangers waiting on you guys. Let them know that we have another school that'll be coming out. We're taking a few pictures. Um, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go ahead and bring the middle and high school student from Ogathaw, I want you and your teachers to come on up now, and we're gonna get a picture of you all real fast with the panelists, and then, um, then we just have the people that got the prizes remain, that way you can go. So you can come up this way, get behind, beside, 
You can sit on them, whatever you want to do, just get a nice picture with the panelists. Hi, I'm Dr. Bernice A. King. And I'm Dr. Kimberly P. Johnson. And we are the co-authors of It Starts, it starts with, with Me. Well, it, 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 starts, starts, it starts with me. No, I no, think it, starts it really with you. starts with me. No. Well, well, maybe it just starts with you. It starts with you. This is a book for children and the rest of the world about love. A powerful word that really can change and transform our world. Now, this girl here is Amora. So Amora is going to take us on a journey around the world with her friends talking about how we can be loved. Thank you so much for reading this book. It starts with me. Dr. King's vision is coming to life, and you guys are going to carry that vision into the world. Have fun reading. We want our children and you parents to be loved in the way you speak, in the way you act, and in the way you think. That's what it starts with me about. It starts with me. I am the one who affects the world with love.